Hey guys, what's up? I'm Made of Might, you're watching Movie Mods, and today we're gonna be taking this beautiful, colorful toy Han Solo blaster and make it look just a little bit more like the film. It's the best part, and I'm gonna do it several times throughout this, this uh, ordeal. Also, to go with our blaster, we have his belt and holster, which we will be weathering for usual. So, okay, we're gonna take our gun, and first thing, we're going to paint it a beautiful shade of black with this black paint. Let's do it. All right. So, I'm super excited for the Han Solo movie. It definitely seems very different. I'm a huge Harrison Ford fan, like huge. So, like, I literally cried when I saw him in person once, and it was very embarrassing. <laughs> I didn't cry to his face, but he walked on stage at Comic-Con and I cried. Uh, so <laughs> I'm going to be very judgmental of this film. But it's got Daenerys in it, so that's going to be pretty, pretty swell. There we go. So basically the body of his gun is like a, like a black with a gunmetal gray feel to it. So we're just going to start by basing everything out with the black paint. And if you have like spray paint at home, that might be a quicker way to do this. But spraying spray paint in a studio is probably not a good idea. We're not gonna do that. Let's see who we got going on. Who we got? Say hello. Woo! I want to know who's in the chat. You cried in the Force Awakens. Oh, I knew it was coming. So I was at the Hall H panel at Comic-Con for um, the Star Wars film, like the Force Awakens film, and like everybody showed up, it was great, Carrie Fisher was there, Mark Hamill was there, and the last person to arrive was Han Solo, Harrison Ford, and that's when I lost it and I cried. And um, when I was sitting there hearing him like talk about the film, he was like, oh, I, I didn't really want to do it, and then like I, read the script and I couldn't say no, and I was like, they're gonna kill him. The only way that he's gonna say yes to doing another Star Wars film is if he gets to die and not ever have to do it again. So uh, I wasn't quite surprised, it was still very feelsy, but I definitely was not surprised. But it was a great experience. Woohoo, look at all the people that are here. Hello, hello, hi. Oh, I did not make the holster or the belt from scratch. They are actually from that glorious little website called Amazon. Um, so if you would like your own, they're very easy to just click a button and order on Amazon. Um, that is a definitely a whole nother process. But hey, maybe we'll make some cool stuff in the future like that if you'd like to see. So just going around, painting this black. It's gonna take a couple layers, I think, to get it like really solid, but we're also gonna weather on top of it so it's not like a huge deal. Uh, let's see. <laughs> we all cry at Comic-Con sooner or later. I love that, David. It is so true. And it hit me like a ton of bricks, man. And then, after Hall H panel, like, of course, because, like, J.J. Abrams stood up and he was like, well, this is Star Wars and we couldn't just end a panel like this. So here are, like, lanyards. We're all going to walk over to the Embarcadero and we're going to have a live John Williams orchestra concert and I was in my Valkyrie costume at the time. So I had this like giant battle ax and I was in armor and um, I was just crying, snuggling my battle ax in the like, <laughs> like out in the open. And I was alone because a friend of mine at the very last minute was like, I have this ticket to go to Star Wars and I don't really like Star Wars, do you want it? So I booked it from Hall A to Hall H at San Diego Comic Con in my mother effing battle armor with my battle axe and I sat alone and cried and it was like the best experience of my life. Uh, wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> so that was great. It was a wonderful experience. Have you guys ever been to Comic-Con? Do you have any great Comic-Con stories? I want to hear because mine's very embarrassing. <laughs> Make me feel better. Tell me your embarrassing stories. Like, well, yes, let's see. Oh, you met Mark Hamill last night? What? I met I was very, very fortunate to meet Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher and Anthony Daniels and Kenny Baker and literally like everyone um, at Star Wars Celebration the year before The Force Awakens came out. Uh, Carrie Fisher painted my nails, 
It was great. <laughs> she, she, I was very starstruck meeting her, um, for sure. Less so with like Mark Hamill because he was so like personable. Uh, Anthony Daniels, they were all great. They were all amazing. Um, but I, I didn't have the chance to meet Harrison Ford because he doesn't really do cons. So when I saw him at Hall H, I just lost it, like ugly crying. And the lady next to me was like, who is this girl in armor sobbing? <laughs> it was the best. Also at the um, concert, they gave everybody lightsabers. So the entire crowd was just a sea of lightsabers and it was magic and I have it on video and there were fireworks at the end if it wasn't enough. It was beautiful. So tell me your Comic-Con stories. I want to hear. I want to hear. So Dan, uh, we are not primering it and spray painting it because we are in a closed studio that's not well ventilated and I don't want anybody to get sick or anything. So yes, if you have primer and black spray paint at home, that is a much quicker and easier way to do this. Um, but we're not gonna do that today because I don't want to die. That doesn't sound like a fun way to spend my Tuesday. I'd rather spend it here with you fine people painting the sky by hand. But yeah, totally, there are better ways to paint this. This is what I got. And I'm sticking to it. But yeah, give me, give me your Comic-Con stories. Make me feel better. If you can't cry in full armor, what's the point to life? Mark, that is so true. <laughs> uh, it was the most ugly, ugly crying um, ever. Me and my battle axe. My battle axe and I are best friends now. It's got to see me cry at <laughs> Star Wars. <sighs> the life of a cosplayer, dudes. But that was a great experience. Super great. the blasters make, right? Oh wait, they make the sound. Can you hear that? I don't know if you can hear that, but it's great. All right. Wow, ooh. <laughs> okay guys, give me your Comic-Con stories. Tell me some Star Wars stories. How did you feel about the new movies? Did you get feelsy? Was there like a particular moment where you were like, oh, my childhood, it hurts, or my childhood, this is the best, I feel so warm and fuzzy. Tell me. Tell me. Talk to me, guys, talk to me. Pew, pew, pew. Yeah, that's totally the sound that this gun makes. Pew, pew, pew. So we're just using like regular acrylic paint for this. It sticks pretty well to like basically most, most all surfaces. Um, and this is just like a plastic gun. Probably shouldn't be painting the tip not a safe color. <laughs> I think orange is there for a reason, but just be responsible, you guys. Be responsible, that's all that I ask. Oh, I feel like I did get very, very emotional during Force Awakens just because like everybody's coming together again. Was it the best film? Maybe not. Definitely not my favorite of the films, but it was great to like have everybody come together and to see the connections and stuff. And, and I do really like the new cast. I think that they're doing a great job. Like, oops. <laughs> Trigger safety, my friends. <laughs> Don't paint a live blaster. <laughs> but thank goodness this one is fake as heck. Um, but I definitely got so feelsy during The Force Awakens. The Last Jedi, not as much. Although I was holding my breath the whole time because I was like, oh my God, are they gonna kill off Carrie Fisher? How are they gonna do this? Is it gonna happen? Oh my God. And then that one scene happened, spoiler alert. And I was like, oh my God, are they gonna kill her? And then she doesn't die. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> You're gonna just, you're gonna drag this out for me, aren't ya? You're gonna drag it out for the next film and you're gonna pull on my heartstrings again. It was, it was good though. What's your guys' favorite Star Wars film? 
You just saw The Last Jedi? What'd you think? What'd you think? Tell me. Oh! Mark has never been to Comic-Con. Well, you should go to a Comic-Con. Like, doesn't need to be San Diego, but go to like one show that's like the closest one to you. That would be great. Let's see. Ooh, Greedo and Boba Fett. Like, I'm looking for those Easter eggs in the Han Solo movie. I'm gonna be looking. Are they better? I know for sure, obviously they're gonna have Lando. He's in like the trailers. But yeah, they're, they're definitely gotta have a note, like a nod to Boba Fett. They gotta explain why there's that like history. Where'd that history come from? I wanna know. Let's see. Oh, you're gonna be doing a Han Solo cosplay. What a great cosplay to do. I hope that you find this video helpful in some way, shape, or form. But yeah, I'm really excited. I'd like to cosplay Han Solo too. Today I'm a lowly Jedi. Tomorrow I might be Han Solo. We'll see. We'll do it all. Let's see, we have so many comments, you guys. Oh. <laughs> Law says um, that his favorite Star Wars moment is when Yoda's being a brat and throws away Luke's food. And he's like, hey, that's my dinner. <laughs> I mean, I'd be pissed. I love food. I'd be like, but food. Food. I also did love how in The Last Jedi, they brought back the like crazy Yoda. Like the weird Yoda, like puppet guy. It really like brought it all full circle for me. And I was like, you know what? I'm glad that he's not like the prequels Yoda and that he's this old crazy crazy man and Luke turned into that old crazy man and <laughs> it was beautiful beautiful your best friend in you cried when Luke died ah, I, w I definitely thought it was a beautiful symbolic like way to get him out of the franchise <laughs> although I'm sure he's gonna be back like he's got it at least in like flashbacks as a force ghost it's gonna happen he's gonna be back oh, this is looking pretty good I'm just kind of going through and like covering up a little bit of the um, rough spots. It's looking pretty, pretty solid. Still kind of shiny because it's wet. But let's see. Oh, Jimmy says that both the new movies loved them and uh, that they took them back to the old films. I definitely got that vibe a little bit from a few certain moments. And I think that it's important that they like, you know, let the new cast take over. like so we can keep having more Star Wars movies. <laughs> I'm all about that. Let's see. Ooh, favorite Star Wars moment is when Luke says he's a Jedi like his father before him. That is a good moment. And then you find out it's Darth Vader, spoiler alert, whoa! But if you don't know that by now, why are you watching me paint this Star Wars solo blaster? <laughs> I don't feel as bad. I guess just getting all the details. There's a lot of little nooks and crannies on this gun, you guys. Like a lot of nooks and crannies, but it's looking pretty good so far, right? Look at that. Yes, yeah, yeah. Doesn't look like like a cartoon gun anymore, for the most part. Let's see what else are we saying. There's so many comments, you guys. I'm so happy. Y'all are talking to me. I have friends. We're gonna bring the paint along this part of the gun as well. Boop, 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 boop. Basically, all the blue parts of this gun are gonna be um, painted black. I have a blue gun, but I want it painted black. <sighs> let's see, let's see. They shouldn't have changed directors. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I didn't really read up on like why they changed directors. I did like Abrams a lot. But I didn't dislike this movie, you know, it is what it is and we can't really change it, so. So there's that, but I am curious as to why like Abrams left. He did a good job on the Star Trek films in my opinion. But then again, I'm not the um, highest and mightiest authority on Star Trek because I'm not really a huge Star Trek fan. I'm definitely more of a Star Wars lady myself. For sure, Star Wars all the way. Whoa. But it is funny that like Abrams did both like Star Wars and Star Trek. I do find that kind of funny. I bet the fans are like, oh. I don't care, but I'm sure some people care. <laughs> some of those intense fans. Let's see. Every year on Christmas when Star Wars, when it was Star Wars and your birthday, what? That's great. Great birthday present. 
Oh, on my birthday last year, the Underworld, the newest Underworld movie came out and I was like, bless! Went and saw it on that day. It was great, but normally my birthday is not on a Friday. Let's see. Mm -hmm. It was good, but you had issues. I think everybody had a few issues. Even I had issues, but you know. I'm trying not hard, not, I'm not trying to take away the fun and the love of it by diving too intensely into leg issues. It is what it is. We always have the originals, if nothing else. We'll always have the originals. The original trilogy. This is a kind of a Casablanca reference, not a very good one, sorry. Um, C2H2 was great! Luigi's in the house. He went to C2E2 with me. It was super fun. It was a great con. Lots of love there. We have so many. Oh, I can be Hannah Solo. <laughs> Hannah Solo. That's cute. I just want to be Harrison Ford, though. <laughs> Look at it. It's looking pretty decent so far. You know, pretty, pretty decent. Oh, I heard the rumor that they're gonna recast Leia, but I think that that's false. I think that's a host hoax. I don't. I do not think they would do that. I don't think that the Star Wars fans would take it. I definitely would be disappointed as hell. I don't think that they should be recasting her. That is my personal opinion. But um, I, yeah, I think that was like a joke on the internet. I don't think that's real. If it is real, I'm gonna seriously question the decisions of the execs. Let's see, is there a Comic-Con in Georgia? I'm sure, I'm pretty sure. You should Google it. <laughs> uh, thoughts on Rogue One? I liked it. I mean, it definitely was different, for sure. Like, it wasn't part of, like, the um, full series for me. It was a nice little, like, kind of, like, break. It definitely had more of a classic movie feel, in my opinion, than The Force Awakens did. It was kind of an interesting, like, contrast coming right after The Force Awakens. But I liked it. Um, it, I don't know, parts of it felt really Star Warsy to me and parts of it didn't. Um, but I, I enjoyed it as an overall film and I'm not the kind of person to be like super intense about like accuracy and blah blah blah. Like I just like a good movie, guys. I just like enjoying films. Okay, cool. I think that's as good as it's gonna get for now. But we are going to paint the handle part now. Well, my hands aren't as dirty as I thought they'd be by now. So we're gonna paint the handle part. Um, I do this one, this like tannish color, because it looks more like leathery. Oh, it looks great so far, thanks so much. Oh yes, Rolling Stones, man. Got it. I'm glad somebody got the reference. <laughs> I'm really awkward, I'm sorry. Really bad. Okay, this tan might actually be too light. Look at that, trial and error. So we're gonna mix it with this. It's gonna be gonna be great. Yeah, I get you. I was kind of sad when Luke passed away, but I do think they needed it to happen for like the progression of the films. I think they're relying too heavily on the nostalgia and the classics and stuff. And like, in order to take it to a new world and a new level, they probably had to start phasing out our like beloved classics, which is really sad, but I kind of understand, you know, they want to start giving us new stuff. And, and I don't want, I want Ray to be able to take her own. I want the, the new guys to be able to like take the mantle. I don't want them to be like relying on, you know, the classic guys to get us through the film. I want them to be good on their own without the, the older cast, you know? Cool. So this has like these grooves and you really got to just like go for it. Load your brush up with paint and just like Get those grooves, man. Get your groove on. Paint them brown. What oh, else? I, um, man, Garrett, I don't agree with you. I think I would. I think I'd have a hard time if they recasted Leia. I think it's just because I am a huge Carrie Fisher fan. Like I love her. She's one of my biggest like icons. I guess idols, that word, idols, and I don't think I could handle it if they recast her. I'm not so sure that I'd be behind it. I think I'd be really sad. I also don't think for respect of Carrie Fisher that anybody should agree to that. But that's just my personal opinion. You can have yours. You're entitled to it. I respect that. But I just, I love Carrie Fisher way too much. She painted my nails, guys. We bonded. 
We bonded. I was so starstruck when I met her. She's like the only celebrity that I've been speechless meeting. And then she painted my nails and I was like, this looks terrible, but I'm gonna keep it because Carrie Fisher did it. <laughs> uh, should've taken a picture, it was really bad. It was glittery and pretty though. Here's the polish. I'm trying to like keep this little silver guy silver in the middle, but like you can see that the rest is starting to look grand. I'm gonna flip it over and do the other side of the handle. There's always two sides to a pistol blaster. Dang. Let's see, what else? Let's see. Oh, apparently Johannes is a Star Trek fan. Well, you picked the wrong fandom, my friend. It's all about Star Wars, bro. We're gonna, we're gonna fight about it later. <laughs> Movie mods f part two, fight. Just kidding, we won't fight. He's a nice lady. Let's see. Let's see. Da -da -da. Okay. Oh, apparently Abrams just didn't want to do all three. Thank you guys for your info. Thanks for filling me in. I feel a little more informed now. I appreciate the answers to my questions. Hello, well, Luigi said C2E2 was like being in Hoth, which is so true. It was snowing in Chicago and I'm from sunny California. It was quite the shock. I had to Amazon now a jacket <laughs> so I didn't die. It's very California of me. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having a hard time keeping up. You guys are so active today. Thanks for talking to me. Wow. How do you think they're going to write off Leia? I honestly am not sure because I thought it was going to happen uh, the last movie and they had a great opportunity to do it and then she like force, force pushed back to the ship and I was like, wait, what? Um, so we'll see. I'm honestly like not sure how they're going to do it. Uh, I don't know how much she recorded for the the last one, if anything, so I guess we're just gonna have to wait and see. I'm really curious, but I'm also like, they're pulling us through this emotional roller coaster and they're not ending it, and I'm upset about it. I need it to end so I can finally have some peace. Let's see, I know I miss Carrie Fisher too. Let's see, you will still see Luke as a force ghost, is so true, I am 100% sure that he's still gonna be a thing, and they're, they're not gonna lose Mark Hamill. He's much too much of a fan and too, like, integral in the universe to just, like, bye. He's gonna be, like, a, um, oh, I wonder if he's gonna be, like, a, a ultra mega force ghost that can actually, like, touch things, like, use the force still and, like, push things. I wonder if, like, that'd be really cool because he was so, like, powerful during real life and could project himself. That would be sick but we're just gonna have to wait and see. I hate the waiting. The anticipation is the worst. The worst. The blaster looks awesome, thank you so much. It's gonna be an off-screen death for the princess. I really hope so, because I don't want to watch it. <laughs> I'm gonna be a wreck. I was a wreck, like, already. So, ooh, we'll see. All right, now we're gonna take some silver leaf paint, which Law opened for me earlier, thank you, Law. <laughs> And we are going to, I have to clean this brush off real quick because it is too covered in others. And I'm probably gonna have to shake this a little bit. <laughs> so nerve wracking. Uh, we're gonna paint the um, tip of the gun. I don't know what that's called, like the tip of the barrel, silver. Ready guys. Yeah, I don't think they should recast Leia. I'm totally with you on that one. Um, Tony, totally with you. Shots fired, ha ha ha. Good thing I have the blaster in this situation. Johannes better bring it. He's gonna mess with like the sound or the light or something and make me look really dumb. <laughs> he has the power, I should probably back off. <laughs> oh man. Let's see. Yeah, I do like Meryl Streep a lot, I agree. I like her a lot, she's a great actress. I've never seen a film that I didn't like her performance in, but but Leia is Carrie Fisher. She's been Leia f since 77, you know? That's hard. And like, uh, I don't know, I don't think I could do it. I don't think I could do it. 
I think it would make me more emotional if they recast her than just to see her, you know, perish epically in the film. So I just don't know how much they like shot of her. Or, ah, uh, I'm also not so sure that I want them to CGI her either. You know, like they did with um, Tarkin in Rogue One. That was the only thing that kind of threw me off, was him being incredibly CGI'd. Like, ugh, I'm sure somewhere in the world there's like a body double, just use him. <laughs> Everyone has a doppelganger, right? I heard that somewhere. Find a really good Carrie Fisher impersonator. Just kidding, don't. Just give her an honorable death and, and call it that. That's, I'd be okay with that. You gotta be kind of careful with this and a little more precise because it is such like gnarly stuff. Oh my God, get out of here! No! Oh, it's on. It's on, Johannes. Ooh. Okay guys, in the comments below, tell me, Star Wars or Star Trek? Let's settle this now. Let's settle this. Let's see. Johannes the troll. Oh, you think Han Solo's ghost will appear to Kylo Ren? That's an interesting point. I wonder, that would be really cool. Then again, Harrison Ford is like, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out, goodbye, thank you, I'm done. So I don't know that he would do that. Maybe he would if they paid him like a lot of money. <sighs> I'm in it for the money. Oh, was there not ever such a true Han Solo quote? Harrison Ford is definitely in it for the money. Uh, but I love him, I love him so much. He's great. Let's see, ooh, a Ewok and Porg meeting. That would be great. I don't know if that little Porg guy, I can't remember, did he like stick around? Is he still hanging out with Chewbacca? Is that like Chewbacca's new little buddy? Is that the new Han Solo? Is the Porg the new Han? It's like a burning, burning question. Are Porgs the new Han Solo? <laughs> God almighty, please no. I did like the Porgs, I thought they were cute. People like bitched about them, but I thought they were adorable. And like, I didn't think I would like them. I thought maybe they would be a little too much or too gimmicky, but I think the way they inserted them in the film wasn't um, terrible. It wasn't terrible, could have been terrible, could have been really bad. Oh no. <laughs> oh. Yeah, they won't recast, there's no way. There's no way they could do that. Like, the world would implode. Everyone would be, no one, I don't think any of my like Star Wars fans are gonna, are gonna stand for that. Okay, this is looking pretty silvery. Pretty silvery. The stuff is, smells terrible. I've said it before and I'll sell it, say it every freaking time. It smells like butt. It's gross but it makes everything look very metallic-y. And now we're gonna just quickly do the inside as well, because you'll see the orange through the little, little holy guys if we don't. Star Wars every day. No, 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 no. You can't say Star Wars and Star Trek, friends. Y'all gotta vote. Yeah, gotta vote. <laughs> but Star Trek was your first space show or movie, but which one is better? Give me that definite answer, nothing vague. Okay guys, I think this is about it. I kinda gotta let this sit and dry a little bit before we can move on to the weathering. But it looks pretty good so far, right? Look at that. So now, now while this blaster dries, we are going to take it on over to Law over there. Hello everybody and welcome to Halftime. I'm Dave, I was supposed to be joined by Law, but instead, Look, I have such a special guest with me, uh, star of the upcoming film. I mean, wow, Han Solo himself. That's me, definitely 
me. 100%, this is Han Solo. Yeah. It's very rare that we get such grade A-list celebrities here on Super News, but I got one today. Lucky you guys. Also, Chewbacca made an appearance. He did? Where? <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Right there he is. R.I.P. Any, uh, hey, uh, you know. Uh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. Any other Star Wars characters anywhere else on set? Um, oh, I they, mean, that little, little a-hole yeah. over there. Mm -hmm. um, just say, uh, just say, he looks a little short for a stormtrooper, <laughs> though. <laughs> Fair, he's a, it was a little tiny. Mid, Mid-sized. Mid-sized. Cool. Well, so welcome. on today's show, uh, here's what I'd love you to do. Oh, Obviously, okay. uh, I know that you were in the movie, so you probably know a lot about it. But for those that aren't as familiar, what I'd love to do is play the trailer okay. for the new Han Solo movie. And then you and I are going to react to it with a little GIFs. Nice. GIFs or GIFs, if you're kind of a dick about Not it. Not that one. You know? Not but we'll be reacting to that using only GIFs. Uh, so, why don't we play the trailer, we'll come back, play our gifts, and uh, we'll see how we feel about this film. Want to know what you guys think as well? Please comment below. Let's check out the trailer for Solo, A Star Wars Story. You're after something. Is it revenge? Money? Or is it something else? You look good. A little rough around the edges, but good. Heard about a job. Big shot gangster putting together crew. I'm a driver, and I'm a flyer. I waited a long time for a shot like this. What do you think? Uh, well, what do you know? You got a line on a ship? Yeah, I know a guy. He's the best smuggler around. I heard a story about you. I was wondering if it's true. Everything you've heard about me is true. Whoa. <laughs> L3! Let's go with a mean man's face. Who are these guys? If you come with us, you're in this life for good. You might wanna buckle up, baby. Here they come! Let me give you some advice. We assume everyone will betray you, and you will never be disappointed. I got a really good feeling about this. When do you know how to fly? 190 years old? You look great. Push it. There you have it. A standalone film, or as we like to say, a solo film, <laughs> for none other than Han Solo. I wanna know what you guys think. Uh, it got a lot of mixed reviews leading up to it. Obviously there's some turmoil with directors right. and shifting directions and Disney getting involved and lots of stuff. But ultimately, I wanna know how you feel about this trailer and I want you to show me using one of those bad boys. A GIF. Uh, law, or sorry, <coughs> Han. Oh, that's me. Excuse me. Uh, I, I uh, want to know it off, what, <laughs> what, what you think. What's your first GIF you, you got? Um, well, let's, let's go ahead and pull up the one I have of, uh, just like talking about the director situation. Yeah. Um, let's see what I we I have got. some thoughts on that as well. Let's see what GIFs we have here. Oh, yes. yes. So this is, um, there's some concern about this film. I, I, I got my buddy 3PO to show up um, just because they went from Phil and, and mm -hmm. uh, Phil Lord and Chris Miller 
Mm -hmm. uh, and then they switched over to Ron Howard, and there's been a lot of uh, just controversy over what the creative differences were, yeah. that the initial directors maybe weren't prepared for a fil film like this. So there are parts of me that are worried about how I'm gonna be portrayed. Yeah, no, I, I totally get that. And uh, I don't want to offend you, but here's my first gift that okay. I chose uh, when I first saw the trailer. This is a little bit about how I felt. Okay, okay. Uh, or how it made me feel. Um, Ooh. Ooh. I, 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 yeah, Ooh. just, I... Mm. Some would say that your enthusiasm uh, may have been curbed, curbed a, bit. a bit. There it is. Uh, yeah, I think when I first saw this trailer, I, I think I was confused as to what kind of movie this is. Yeah. Um, I felt like there's a couple different genres in there. Certain parts it feels very PG, kid-friendly. Very Disney. Dis very Disney. Other times it feels like a comedy. And then there's moments in the trailer where you're like, ooh, there's <laughs> that Star Wars nostalgia and I'm mm. all about it. But ultimately, uh, ultimately, I left kind of being like, I feel like this is going to try and tell a story that we all already kind of know. Yeah. Right? It, it's, it's an interesting one. Now, did you have that feeling initially with the teaser trailer or after this new Oh, you trailer? mean that Denny's goodness that they released? <laughs> uh, yeah, I had a lot of other feelings when that trailer was released. Try uh, my menu at yeah. Denny's now. <laughs> but mostly, uh, it just gave me indigestion as it reminded me of times of Denny's past. <laughs> uh, what other reactions do you got to this law? Let's pull another one up. Let's see what, what, let's see what else. I have a, a few uh, just for different aspects of the film here. Let's see what we got. Oh, oh. We got oh. Donald Glover dancing, oh. celebrating. I like the overalls because it kind of reminds me of the Lando look a little bit. Yes. But this. Uh, this gives us to, to portray what I'm excited about, which okay. is Lando Calrissian. I'm also a really, really big fan of the new droid, the female droid that we're seeing, L337, which if you guys are familiar with the internet, the little thing called the internet. Heard of it. You could, uh, like, it's based off of Leet speak. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's pretty cool and hip and now, so I appreciate that. Yeah, all the kids are, are speaking elite. These yeah, days. they're they're yeah, they're, everyone's they're very it. elite about it. <laughs> you, no shortage of puns on today's <laughs> halftime show. I guarantee you. <laughs> but I am excited about Donald Glover's portrayal of Lando Calrissian. I think uh, that's a consensus around most of the people on the internet that I've talked to. They're stoked to see his portrayal. Just see him be. That smooth, you know, Colt yeah. 45, you know, channel his Billy D. Williams a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, I've never actually heard him referred to as Colt 45, but <laughs> now that you say it, I think it's dead on. I that's mean, a dead that's on description a, right there. Uh, let's see, uh, Mark is saying that he can't put gifts in the chat, but he wants to so bad, Mark, and I understand. But you know what, Mark, I'm reading your mind. I know exactly the gif that you would react to the solo Star Wars movie. Dave's I, I have it. I have it. it. Here it is. That's the one. There it is! Because I feel like that's how Harrison Ford feels right now. <laughs> He's saying, I did all the legwork, pal. I made this character beloved. I made him a hero. You're not going to be as suave as me. You're not going to be as witty or as charming or as crass as me. Get off my plane. This is my money maker, pal. Get off my plane. Yeah, I can't I, do it. I can't. I can't imagine <laughs> that Harrison Ford was for this movie. A dude who really, I mean, as Made of Might said earlier, he didn't even really want to be in, yeah, yeah, in, in the, the first new Star Wars <laughs> in the seventh one. Yeah, he really didn't. He was basically like, I will show up. I will do a little cameo, and you better kill me real <laughs> quick, or I'll kill myself. I'm a bad pilot. Um, in real life, okay. He, he needs to stay out of planes. We need to put him in some bubble wrap, please. Can we <laughs> please preserve Harrison Ford Someone at this point? Save, you know what would Jeez work? Louise. Carbonite, let me tell you about it. Ooh, we can freeze him, he can just be like. Ooh, good call. Yeah, let's look into that. Can someone, can someone call, call, call my Carbonite Ford? guy? And call you his know Carbonite him. guy? Put him in there, you know save him. him, please? No. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, fair enough. Uh, you got another one for We got us. one more gift. What's this uh, referring to, this one? No, this one, let me, I, I, can't, I can't remember. Um, I, I think this was just my overall kind of feeling. Again, yeah. there are certain things about, about the movie that make me nervous, specifically the acting from our lead. Yeah. 
Um, so, I mean, there's, there, I love Harrison Ford. I love his portrayals, Han Solo. He's also Indiana Jones. He's if you don't love Harrison Ford, get off my plane. Get off my plane. What the heck? Who doesn't like Harrison Ford? It's like when someone says, I don't like Tom Hanks. You're yeah. like, okay, so you're not American. Yeah, you just don't appreciate okay. talent. Yeah. So, but here's, here's my concern is that there were concerns about uh, the, the lead actor. They brought in some acting coaches. So I heard it's gotten better. He's gotten kind of calmer. I just don't know how much of the reshoots are gonna affect the rest of the film. I can say this, okay? If I was hosting this halftime show and you guys brought if. in a bunch of host coaches, mm. that wouldn't be a good sign. Coaches, okay? So I'm just saying maybe you don't want the lead actor that you've already cast in the movie to be figuring out how to act during the movie. Right. Might just be a hot take. Who knows? Here's my last gif, and I'll tell you what this is referring to. What? Johannes, yeah. Ooh, ooh. That's oh why I'm excited about this <laughs> film, huh? Mother of Dragons is in it. Khaleesi. Khaleesi. And yes, she's playing a different character, but I know under all of that, it's truly Khaleesi. And we're probably gonna see dragons in this movie because as Disney is smart, they'll throw some dragons in this movie because we all love dragons. She's a secret Targaryen inside the solo film. That's pretty good. And there's your song of the day. You're welcome. Uh, download it right now on iTunes. <laughs> <laughs> there was, it's, it's that quick. It's already up there. Um, yes. Yeah. I'm excited for the dragons, or at least to see Amelia Clark in this. Um, I'm very confused about her character. I don't know what she's about. Yeah, well, that, that's probably one of the storylines in this film that we don't already know something about. Yeah. Um, and we'll see what happens. I mean, if Donald Glover absolutely crushes it, yeah. maybe he he'll get a little standalone film, you know? Ooh, kind of bridge the gap. I, I would be down to watch, I, like we were talking about this the other day, but I think I may have preferred a Lando film. I know Big a lot time. of people, this is why they're watching it, to see Childish Gambino channel his inner Lando. Yeah. So, I mean, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, I think uh, you don't really want a spin-off movie or a prequel or a standalone film about a character that you feel like you know a lot about. Yeah, right. And I, I don't know what age, and maybe someone in the comments knows this, what age Han Solo was. In New Hope? In, in A New Hope, because it feels like the age gap between where a Solo A Star Wars story is starting from and where Han Solo picks up from in A New Hope is just like five years. Yeah. Like he seems like a 19 year old in this and maybe he was like 23, 24 in A New Hope where he was supposed to be the character. Uh, so it's really like, how much time are we learning about him? Uh, except he did look like a child in those Denny commercials. So oh, yep, yep. that could be something to look forward to. Maybe we go all the way back and we watch, it's like boyhood. Maybe they've been filming this yeah. for the last 12 years. At this point, I think I'd rather see the Denny standalone film <laughs> and just see what, where Denny's, what's Denny's story? Where do they come to, from? Yeah, what are they up to? How do you make money off the Grand Slam? I don't understand. <laughs> it's so much food for so just, little. It just can't, it can't be a good investment. <laughs> the margins on that are way too small. Um, all right, well enough biz talk for today. This has been your epic halftime show. I want to thank my very special guest, Han Solo. I just want to say, even though my gifts were, you know, kind of ragging on the trailer, I am excited to see you. I'm excited to learn about you. Yeah. I'm excited to see you on the big screen once again. Uh, but I, I'm looking and you don't have one of your most important weapons. You know, it's, it's, it, it. It hurts not having my holster and my, my blaster by yeah, my side. You're known for that. It's kind of my thing. So um, we're, we're hoping that Maid of Might finishes that up pretty soon so I can, you know, yeah. go back out there and start shooting first. I see what you did there. Yeah. I see what you did there. In fact, let's go over to Maid of Might so she can show you how to complete the weathering of Han Solo's blaster. Maid of Might, you over there. Oh. You, uh, you mean this blaster? <laughs> so our paint has dried, thank goodness. Um, we have the silver barrel, we have the black body of it, and then the um, brown handle. That's the word I'm looking for. Now we're going to take this blaster and we're going to weather it to make it kind of look like it's been in a few, you know, like gunfights, a few like space gunfights. We're going to take our silver rub and buff, which is one of my favorite weathering tools, and put a little bit on this paper towel over here. 
Boop, boop, a doop. There we go. And take a little bit of a sponge. I'm using this makeup sponge because it's small and easy to kind of maneuver. Make sure you don't get too much because a little of this stuff goes a long way. And then we're just going to rub it on, uh, on the gun, on all of the angles to kind of make all of the details and the angles and stuff. Be a little hard to see at first, but but we're here. So, what do you guys think of the trailer? I'm the kind of person who like avoids trailers like the plague because I don't want the movie to be spoiled for me or anything. So, tell me, what were your thoughts? I want to know. I want to know. I am excited for the film. I've only seen the actor in one film before, and it was that uh, movie, oh, I can't remember, something about like Caesar. Yes. Like, Hail Caesar, that's the one I saw him in that. But he played a guy who was a really bad actor. <laughs> so I don't know if he was a bad actor or if maybe he was a great actor playing a really bad actor. But either way, I really hope that, you know, at least they are taking steps to coach him and make it better if they're not happy with it, instead of just being like, well, he's our guy, so we're just gonna deal. But he's very cute. So, he, I mean, he kinda has that, like, Han Solo-ish charm going on. You can also use this rub and buff stuff, and you can put it, like, on the little screws and things to make them look a little bit more, uh, more real and silvery. Battle worn, like real metal. He's been using this pistol for a while, man. Got to shoot a lot of folks. Got a lot of business deals gone south. What's a smuggler without his weapon? Ooh, hoo hoo! It's looking neat. I am really excited to see Daenerys. Amelia Clark as a different character in a nerdy realm. Uh, I love Game of Thrones, and, and I didn't watch that other film she was in, like Piece of Me or something, that one really sad one, because I don't like sad movies. <laughs> but I'm sure she was great in that too. Okay guys, I'm going to lift this up and I'm gonna show you the silver rub and buffed side versus the other side before I do the um, other side, just so you can totally see the contrast in this stuff and just how cool it is. So here we go. We are seeing the rub and buff side and the other side. Look at how like flat that is and how popped that is. Woo! Definitely looking pretty cool. So we're going to do the other side, same to the other side. And you can see like only a tiny, tiny bit of this stuff. Just like, this is like a little, little bit. Boom, look at that. It's so pretty. Can you believe this was blue and orange first? See, so matte, you can barely see, like you can only see this, the details when I tilt it, which is like so sad. But look, you could see the details no matter what I do on this. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, we're going to do the other side. And, like, just use the corner of your sponge. Like, literally a little tiny bit goes a long way. And you can always, like, start at first on the, the pieces you think are going to need a little more silver than the others. So you can... Look at that. It's just, like, so... So uh, subtle and such a small amount a really cool technique and this is like a universal thing you can use on basically anything you want to weather just lightly brushing it I feel like Bob Ross just just a little bit of happy happy weathering on our, our happy Star Wars blaster it's okay mistakes are just character just kidding mistakes are just more badass weathering whoa Battle damage. Woo. So this plate, it, it definitely is the most effective when you just like go around the edges too. 
A little bit goes a long way, and you do not need much. If you have too much, then your gun is just going to be completely silver, and you're going to waste all that time you spent painting it black at first. Just a little bit. Have fun with it. Um, another step that you can do at home that I just didn't have the time to do today is you can sand all the logos and stuff off. Like if you're using a Nerf gun, you can sand all the logos off just to make it look a lot smoother. But that kind of stuff is never going to really show up in your photos. So if you're just using it for cosplay, photo shoots and stuff, it's not too big of a deal. So weathered. So dirty. I'm like covering it with my head. Looks so good, thanks. Oh, that's right, I forgot that Amelia Clark, Clark was in the Terminator movie. I didn't see that one either. But hey, if she was good in that too, like. Also, it's probably gonna be much easier to see her as not Daenerys because she won't have the light blonde hair. I feel like if she were ever in a film with like light blonde hair, everybody would just be like, look, it's Daenerys. <laughs> so they're, they're definitely, um, also though, I must admit, I'm a blonde, uh, and there really aren't very many blonde females in Star Wars. Most of the leading ladies have been brunettes, and it's real difficult for me having to wear a wig for all these ladies. I love them all, but give me a blonde. Give me a blonde leading lady, you guys. I know Phasma was, was blonde, or at least um, Gwendolyn Christie is blonde, but uh, I'm a little short for Phasma. She's quite tall. Cool. All right, that looks really, really sick. Now, the last thing we're going to do to the gun is take the black rub and buff, which is like the opposite of the silver, and use it on like the tip of the gun to make it look like it's been shooting blasts. Yeah, blasts. I'll put a little bit of that. Look, I get a plate now. <laughs> I'm so excited. A little bit of this on the plate. Roop. And then we'll just use the other side of this sponge. Let's see. Oh, I'm so glad that, uh, yeah, maybe put a blonde in the next one, guys. This is coming from a big, a blonde Star Wars fan. I love all the ladies and I have nothing against brunettes, but it would be so much easier for me to cosplay somebody if they were blonde. <laughs> And we're just gonna take it from this tip of this blaster and pull it back towards the barrel to make it look like the blast has been coming out of the, the tip here. See? But don't um, cover up all of the silver. You still want it to be obviously silver. Just like the silver, if you use too much of the black rubbing buff, it's gonna um, turn out black again. So just a little bit goes a very long way. You just don't want it to look like it's brand new right from the, the blaster store. Yeah, look at that. Woo, kind of a step up from the child's toy, right? A little bit, a little bit, <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> cool. Boom. Now that we have this epic blaster done and we can let it kind of set, over here, and we're gonna start on the holster. Here we go, look at this like belt and holster combo. He's styling. Let's see, wasn't Leia's second a blonde in Last Jedi? She actually had like lavender hair. She had like pink hair. So close, but not quite. All right guys, we're going to take black paint, a little bit of black paint, and same with any weathering, a little bit of this goes a very long way. And we're gonna take this sponge, which is a little more of like a, I don't know, more porous sponge. Get just a little bit on there. And we're gonna rub all the edges. Create a little bit of dimension. He's been wearing this for a while, this holster. Got their space. Look at that. Already you can tell that looks way dirtier than this side. Like older and like we didn't buy it off Amazon. That's the whole point, I guess. 
And you always kind of want to go from like the outside of the thing you're weathering in. And you also can do it very like organic. You don't have to make it look pretty. Obviously, we're making it look dirty and gross. So you can start <coughs> here. Go on. Boop, boop, boop. Blasters are us. Oh yeah, did anybody go to Toys R Us? I heard they were closing and been having sales and stuff. You guys gone to Toys R Us? I bet you they have Star Wars blasters. Better stock up. Like tell the difference. I'm like flip it over to the like really clean side. Wow, so dirty. I've been working it since 1977, man. I did like Haldo's hair a lot. I did like that pretty, like, pinky lavender. It was a good look, but I didn't really like her, so probably won't be cosplaying her. <laughs> she redeemed herself, but I don't know. I'm a huge Poe fan. I love those, like, fly boys. That's probably why I like Han Solo so much. Um, so anything that stifles Poe is not a thing. Sorry about it. Just a little bit of black paint on all our leather bits. Especially this part, like this is where he's going to be grabbing it. So you got to think about like the parts that have the most use are going to be the dirtiest because you're constantly reaching for it. And touching it and getting your grubby little fingers all over it. And I love doing this part because you totally don't have to like be clean or precise. You just go ham. It's a real great stress reliever. Oh, uh, most of the Toys R Us's have already closed. I remember that was like the coolest thing. Like, we didn't ever had one in my hometown, but like we would drive the town over if we were really good and get to go pick out a toy, and it was awesome. And uh, that's sad. That's sad. I'm guessing Babies R Us closed too. I wouldn't see why they would just keep one. Woohoo! Here on Movie Mods, we love making things look dirty. Nothing's clean ever. Yes, yeah, space grime, space grime. Look at that. Okay, I'm going to flip this over so you can see. So there's our weathered side. Boom! Not weathered. So clean and pretty. Just kidding! We've been smuggling for a while now. <laughs> and then you also can take your black paint and you can rub it on the edges of all the metal bits to make them look a lot more like worn out and gritty too. You can also do this with a black rub and buff. A little bit of black rub and buff and a little bit of black paint. It's going to make this look a lot less shiny. Oh yeah, I, I noticed that Billy Lord was in the movie, Leia's daughter. A lot of people said that she should take over for Leia, like um, in the film. So I don't know. We'll see what they do. I wouldn't be opposed. She's a great actress. She was really funny on Scream Queens. Yeah, movie mods is. Um, used to be an Instagram show for you, those of you who don't know. Mark is new with this, <laughs> but that's okay. We're glad to have you. Um, it used to be on my Instagram and now we're taking it live so we can talk to you guys and hang out. And you can see me derp around in real life. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
Wow, Toys R Us is still open in Norway? Are they going to close in Norway, or is it just America? Like, are they just open temporarily, or are they going <laughs> to stay there? I wonder if they're still selling online and stuff. And guys, we're weathering our, our belt buckle. Just a little bit of black paint on the edges. You gotta focus on the edges so that they pop the most. That's how you get your definition and your contrast. So you can see this is my weather belt buckle, and this is the one that isn't weathered. They're like very different. dirty and spacey. So clean and not spacey. And yes, Mark, feel free to go on over to my Instagram. You can see all the old episodes of this show. We are taking things that you can buy you know, in the world and making them look a little bit more screen accurate here. So helping those cosplayers and maybe just you want a cool like blaster as like a centerpiece on your Thanksgiving table. Like, we're here to help. <laughs> we could help and a lot of these techniques that I'm showing you guys can be used on all sorts of different cosplay things. All sorts of them, look at that. Getting dirtier as we go. So fun. Uh, Toys R Us are closing in, closing in the UK too. Ooh, it's so sad. Nostalgia, man. All right, you guys are getting pretty close. Looks like most of our belt is weathered. Very strategically, you can see our bed buckles are kind of grimy. They're really shiny, so you can't see the weathering as much as on, you know, on screen as you can in person. But you can always add more or less as you go. It looks way dirtier in person. You can kind of see some of that dirt. Look at that dirt. So gross. Space dirt. Space dirt. All right, guys. Here we go, we have the belt, we have the holster. Oh wait, upside down. Belt, holster, and blaster. Blast them! All right guys. Now that we have all of this beautiful stuff laid out, let's see it all in action in the trailer. You're after something. Is it revenge? Money? Or is it something else? You look good. A little rough around the edges, but good. Heard about a job. Big shot gangster putting together crew. I'm a driver. And I'm a flyer. I waited a long time for a shot like this. What do you think? Uh, well, what do you know? You got a line on a ship? Yeah, I know a guy. He's the best smuggler around. I heard a story about you. I was wondering if it's true. Everything you've heard about me is true. <laughs> <laughs> ah! 
L3! Let go of the mean man's face. Who are these guys? If you come with us, you're in this life for good. You might wanna buckle up, baby. give you some advice. We assume everyone will betray you, and you will never be disappointed. I got a really good feeling about this. Since when do you know how to fly? 190 years old? You look great. Push it! Look at this, look at this, look at this. Really, I shouldn't be holding this majestical weapon. Han Solo should be holding it. That's right, that's right. No, 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 don't. Okay, I won't. Han no. Solo, more like Han Cholo, am I? <laughs> he deserved that. Well, maybe, maybe I, sh I should keep it. No, this is really good. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Yeah, I'll this, just, yeah. I'm I'll just gonna. Okay, well, it looks great. Looks great on Han Solo, looks great right here. Thank you guys so much for watching Movie Mods and let me know what you guys want to see next. I want to do more stuff. What do you want to see? What should we do? Are you guys still watching? Oh, <laughs> that's, that's awkward. <laughs> oh, well, you should probably then tune in each and every day at noon to Super News Live. So that's tomorrow because we're like, we're done here. So you can leave, but come back tomorrow. But like, leave, but come back tomorrow. I'm gonna leave. Who am I kidding? I don't have anywhere to go.